Today, we are going to do nature and significance of management, part one. And what will we study in this? In this, we'll learn the concept of management, the meaning of efficiency and effectiveness, and also the importance of management. Now, what is management? Management is nothing but getting things done through others. The managers don't do the work themselves. They get it done through the workers who are there. So management is actually a process, a process of achieving the organizational goals. And this the management has to, done, has to do very efficiently and effectively. So we can define management as a process of designing and maintaining an environment in which individuals working together in groups efficiently achieve the selected aims. Now, why is the manager paid so much while the workers log all the time, they work so hard and still they don't earn as much as the managers do? I'll give you an example to explain that. Now, let's say that I tell you to draw a house, a house with thatched uh, roof, just more like a hut. So you picture that in your mind. Okay, now I'll show you the picture that I have in my mind. This is what I thought the house should look like. Now, I told you to picture a house in your mind. Yours might not be the same as this. So getting the work done yourself is much easier than getting it done through others. That is why the work of the manager is very difficult and he is paid so much for it. So now let's study more about it. Now the manager has to get the goals achieved effectively and efficiently. Like here it says, management is the process. Process means it goes on and on of working with and through others to effectively achieve organization goals by efficiently using the resources. So there are two things, efficiency and effectiveness. Let us say a manager is given a target of making 100 shirts per day. If he is able to get those made, because he is not making it himself, he's getting it made from the workers. So if he gets those 100 shirts made every day, then he is called effective. He's effectively been able to achieve the target. And suppose this one shirt was to be made within 150 rupees. The cost of that one shirt should not go beyond 150. So suppose he's getting that shirt made within 150, then he's called efficient. So if the cost is also within the range, he's called efficient. And if he's able to meet the target on time, he's called effective. So effective is finishing the given task and efficiency is doing it correctly with the minimum cost. And this is the example which I have also used. Now come to the characteristics of management. Management has got a number of characteristics and let us study them one by one. Management is goal oriented. Managers have to achieve the goals. Let us say there are 10 workers in an organization and each worker has to make 10 units. So 100 units are being made every day. Now one day two workers don't turn up and the workers who come they make 10 units. So eight workers turned up, they made 10 units each, means 80 units were made, whereas the organizational goal was 100 units. Now 20 units have not been made. Now this is the manager's work to see that who is going to make those two units that have been deficient. If two units could not be made, how to get it made? Because if he engages somebody and pays them over time, then the cost will go up, then he will not be efficient. So the manager has to plan it in such a way that he keeps a target much more than what is required. So even if two workers don't turn up, it doesn't matter much to him because he's already got the things done much more than what is required. So every organization is set up with a particular purpose and this purpose is called a goal. Now organization could be a profit making organization, a non-profit making organization. So for a business, the aim would be to earn profit or increase sales and whereas for a spastic society or any social service organization, they may be having different needs. So the management has to work and see that these aims are achieved. These goals are achieved. So the first characteristic of management is that it is goal oriented. Mm -hmm. Then management is all pervasive. It is everywhere. You and I are also managers. We are managing our life. We are managing our time. So management is common to all organizations, to all countries. Everywhere we have management. Yes, the degree of management differs from the country to country because of the various cultural differences, the difference in history, etc. Then management is multidimensional. Management is just like a diamond. So whichever side diamond catches, light, it starts 
reflecting that light. It starts shining from that side. Similarly, management also has got a number of dimensions. So it has got three dimensions. First is management of work. So you have to get the entire work done. So management of work means the entire work is divided into small, small parts by the manager. And he allocates these small tasks to each person who's there in the organization mm -hmm. in such a way that nobody should feel that I'm doing more work and the other one is not doing any work. So he divides the work into small manageable tasks and gives it to each person in the organization. The first thing is management of work. So when these tasks are completed, the entire work is done. Then the second is management of people. Those people who are going and working in an organization, they have their own personal goals also. Nobody goes and works in the organization so that you can earn profit. So everybody has their own individual goals. So people working in an organization work as an individual as well as they work in a group. So how are they going to work in a group? How to get the work done with people who are working in a group as a team? That is also management of people. So manager has to see that the people who are working their individual needs are taken care of as well as to make sure that they're working properly in a group. They're adjusting in that group and then management of operations. So management has been set up to get some work done. So whatever work has to be done has to be done properly. Like, for example, shirts are being made, continuing with the previous example. Now, what needs to be made first? Do the collars need to be made or the buttons need to be staged or the metal needs to be cut? Whatever has to be done in a particular order, that sequence of orders decided under management of operations. So which task is to be done first and then after that, which task, after that, which task, so that the entire work can be done. This is called management of operations in which uh, they did, he determines the flow of input and output. So this is called management is multidimensional. Then management is a continuous process. Management goes on and on. It's not that the manager goes and gives instructions to the workers and then he goes and sits in his AC room. No, he has to be there very much with the workers throughout to see if any problem comes up later on. So the manager has to tackle a number of functions. Now there are five functions of every manager, which they have to do almost every day in a series of activities that they have to do. I've taken the example of Suhasini and this example is given in NCRT itself. So she's doing a number of tasks every single day. Some days maybe she's planning for the future exhibition and sometimes she's uh, tackling an employee's problem. So management goes on and on. It's a continuous process. Then management is a group activity. Nobody say, can say that I got the work done. Suppose you want to drive a car. And the front two vehicles, they feel that they are only driving the car. The behind two vehicles are just following. And the last two vehicles of the car, they get punctured. So everybody together works. It's not one person. It's not the effort of one person. It's everybody. So if the marketing department was told to sell 3,000 television, then the production department made 3,000 television. That is why they could sell. If the production department made only 2,500 television, how could marketing sell 3,000? So it's a joint effort of everybody. It's actually teamwork. So manager has to make sure that everybody contributes towards it and everybody works in tandem with each other. That is why we say management is a group activity. Then management is a dynamic function. Management has to keep on changing. If you don't change, you become obsolete. So just like the weather keeps changing, we change our clothes according to the weather. Now, if it's winter and you're not wearing sweater, then people will ask you, are you going to fall sick? And during summer, if you're wearing sweater, people will ask, are you sick? So you have to change according to the changing environment. Similarly, the business also has to change according to the changing environment. One very good example that can be quoted here, and you might all be very familiar with it, that is McDonald's. So McDonald's has introduced the Alu Tikki burger only in India. It's not available anywhere else. So keeping in mind the environment in India, they have changed. So management has to be dynamic. You have to change according to the changing environment. This is yet another characteristic of management. Then management is an intangible force. You can't see it. Now, can you say how honest you are? Honesty is not written on anybody's face. Similarly, management you cannot see, but you can feel. How do you know that the management of this organization is good? See, when the targets are being achieved, whatever has been told, the workers are doing, they are happy, they are satisfied. There is no confusion, no chaos. Then in that case, you can say that the management is very good. So management is an intangible force. Now that brings us to the case study. So after every 
video episode, we are going to have a case study in which I have already explained how in my previous video as to how to tackle the case study. You should always read the question given below the case study so that you come to know as to what exactly you have to look for in the case study. So let us see what they've asked. Do you think the production manager is effective? Give reason. And do you think the production manager is efficient? Give reason. So this is what we have to look for in the question. Now let's see, it's a very small case study. Volvo Limited's target is to produce 10,000 shirts per month at a cost of rupees 150 per shirt. The production manager could achieve this target at a cost of rupees 160 per shirt. So do you think the production manager is effective or he's efficient? I'll give you a moment to recollect and rethink, then I'll share the answer with you. Yes. Now the cost was supposed to be 150. So he exceeded the cost and the cost was 160. That means he's not efficient. He is only effective. So yes, the production manager is effective because he was able to achieve the target. No, the production manager is not efficient as he had achieved the target at a higher cost. So you have to give the answer to the point. And if it's asked yes or no, that carries one mark. So be very particular. See what is asked and tackle the question accordingly. And that's all in this video. Thank you.